Measuring angles with a protractor. Level 5, grade E. Okay. Um, something that most secondary school teachers think students should have mastered at primary school, but they very rarely do. Um, some do, some don't. So it's something you need to work out. Um, we've got three types of angles to measure here. And we're going to use one of these sort of half circle tractors. Um, if we had a full circle one, Sometimes that can make things easier, but for some people it's harder, but most people tend to have a, a half circle tractor, so that's what we're going to use. Okay, now this video, if you've got it on a computer screen, you could actually get a protractor out and try to measure these angles before I go through it, so to test whether you can do it or not. They should be the same angles on a computer screen as they are in my video. So if you want to pause the video and have a go before I start, then you can see how it's done or do it with me. Then uh, that should help a lot. Okay, let's show you how to do it. So, with a protractor, first thing we've got to do is we've got to get the center of this protractor onto the end of our angle, so on the vertex of the point where the two lines meet, so that the center is there. Second thing we've got to do is we've got to make the protractor line up with one of the lines. Now, it could be that line there, so that line lines up with that line of the, of the, of the uh, angle, or we could even do it this way around, it doesn't actually matter. Um, we can line it up so that's the zero line and, uh, and measure that angle from there. Now our problem is that if we get the wrong one, like this one, if we're using this one, um, we're not, we're not going to be using the outside scale. Also we've got a bit of an issue that uh, our line doesn't actually go to the end of our protractor so it's difficult to read it off. Now what I would then suggest you do is you get a ruler, although uh, it's much easier if I just draw a line on it, and place your ruler on top of your protractor over the line so then you could show where the ruler meets the uh, the angle measure on the outside and that will allow you to work out the line. So let's just take this one for example. If I've done it from here, from zero here, um, always identify where your zero is and then count up from there. So there's your zero, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. And then we go to the outside, 55, 56, 57. So that should be 57 degrees. Okay, um, if I'd done it the other way, so I'd had it with this of my zero line, and then we're trying to measure the other one. Sometimes it's better to pick the line dependent on whether the, the other line is long enough to read off your scale. This one still isn't quite long enough. If I made my protractor a bit smaller, which I can do, which you can't probably with your protractor, um, then I can, I, if I can see it, I can read it off there. So reading this one, start from 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and 57 and I would I would I would give you the uh, what well, I would say to you if you're not good at measuring angles always identify where the zeros and count it through because the most common mistake with angles not with these small angles but certainly with this um, let's just write that down so that's 57 degrees um, especially with this one I'll show you in a second it's quite easy to pick the wrong angle out if you're not paying attention now you should be okay um, with this sort of thing. Let's just get this on the end here. Um, you should look at the angle to yourself and go, well, that's bigger than 90. So um, if I'm reading it off here and it tells me that it's 40 something or 50 something, that's not right. It has to be bigger than 90. So I must be using this outside scale going around the outside. There's my 90 degrees, 100, 110, 20, 30. And it's going to be just a bit more than 130. I'm actually going to cheat and make my protractor much smaller so it fits. And that's going to tell me it's 133, 34, so roughly 134. I could draw a line on there to make it more accurate. But we're going to go with 133, I think, with this one, or 134. Now, if you're um, doing this on a test, you will, you're likely to be allowed to have plus or minus 2 degrees. So that would allow you from 55 degrees all the way up to 59 degrees. There's quite a bit of leeway on a test. Sometimes one degree, uh, depends on how stringent the test is, one degree will give you full marks and two degrees maybe half marks. Uh, but certainly there is a little bit of leeway. But you've got to get your protractor on the end of the line. Now, um, let's go back to this one again. If I'd done it the other way, so I've measured from that line to this one, uh, measured around, go around the outside, you might think it's 50 something or 40 something. Um, but it's not because we're going around on the inside. So first of all, look at the angle. 
give yourself a rough idea what it is before you start and then uh, you shouldn't make a mistake okay um, this sort of angle here on the back this is called a reflex angle um, very difficult to measure that with an 180 degree protractor what you need to do is to put your protractor on the end as always spin it on the end um, spin the protractor around until it lines up with one of these lines and actually measure the small angle the the acute angle in this case and that goes round to 10, 20, 20, 20, 50, 60, 65, 66 and a half I'm just going to call it 66 degrees so that's the acute angle acute um, so the reflex is going to be 360 minus 66 the 360 minus 60 would be 300 minus 6 is 294 degrees so that's the one we want so if you measure the smaller angle this angle in here and then do 360 minus this angle you will get the reflex angle and that's all there really is to measuring angles